with uh, EJSS and uh, our presenter will be Lo King Hui. Uh, uh, so someone should start their video. I think it will be pre-taped one uh, as well. Uh, we'll leave this one with our uh, organizers to move Hi everyone, to this This is our now. project, Easy Experiment with EJSS, Online Lab Award Visualized Experiment. Together we have uh, me, Zikuang, and Lu Kang, and Felix, and Francisco, Paco. So the four of us are in charge of uh, making uh, this app. So there's actually uh, three experiments that we have done that allows you to use your browser and your smartphone to do experiments. And they are, uh, one is the sound analyzer for standing wave, and there's a light analyzer for gas emission line spectrum. And last of all is the Geiger counter for radioactivity. So I will go through that in details later. So of course, why, why do we develop this app is we don't want our students to learn in a boring way. Uh, by just listening to us talking. And of course, uh, with COVID around the corner, there's an added advantage. Now we can actually do the experiment virtually at home, which I guess uh, goes well with the objective of the conference. Right? So uh, traditionally, this was done using expensive equipment, as you see the quotation here I got from online. Um, at, but with our smartphone, we can actually do this experiment. Uh, every student can do it instead of just having one school, having one devices. So because every student actually have a smartphone with them, and of course they have the browser to collect the data and able to do their own learning. And then of course they can behave like scientists by collecting their own data and then uh, finding out for themselves uh, through inquiry and then um, making physics relevant to the real world. Okay, so as I mentioned, the smartphone is loaded with sensor and the browser and is able to collect large amount of data rapidly. So, and they can display in multiple representative representation to help deepen the understanding. And then uh, they can process the data rapidly and to give students more time to identify the questions. So unlike the data logger, data logger can do the same, but data logger doesn't have the, um, I mean, does it able, able to do it such that every student can do it alone? Right? They have to do maybe like a demonstration and the teacher just demonstrates it. Right. So the yeah, so these are the apps that we have done. Um uh, using these are the browser view of our app. Okay, so let's look at the comparison for the cost saving part. I mentioned it. Then there's also the time saving part because um if you are using a vendor equipment, the teacher needs to distribute it and then need to collect better equipment. Whereas smartphone physics, the, the, teach, the students basically have their own smartphone with them. You just have to give them the website. You go to the website and they can straight away start conducting the experiment. And of course, uh, it also leads to better student outcome because they, the learning is no longer constrained to the lab. They can do their lab anytime, anywhere. And of course, that will lead to more practice. And of course, the scope of the experiment um, with our smartphone, there's so many, so many, many uh, um, sensors that we have. So th there can be many, many experiments that we can actually do with it. Uh, here we have just done three, but this project can be expanded further. So the first of our experiment, uh, you can actually, if you're interested in the app, this is the QR code. You can just scan to this code to get into our app. So what is the objective of this app? Uh, it's able to actually analyze our sound through, um, well, in this example, I have uh, two pipes. So the first one is open pipe. The second one is a closed pipe where I actually seal the bottom of the pipe. So you can actually hear the difference, but that's about all you can do without the app. But with the app, you can actually see that this is what the app actually capture. It actually picks up the sound and break them using Fourier transform uh, into the fundamental frequency and the harmonics frequency. So and it, in addition, you're also able to predict the length to be 31 cm, which is the length of the pipe here. So when I close the pipe here um, and, and start recording the sound, you're actually able to tell that this pattern actually is a closed pipe. Well, because in physics, we know that uh, is the, the open pipe and the closed pipe actually have a different pattern. And it's also able to predict the length correctly. So we have tried it with straws and other pipes. Uh, it doesn't matter about the materials. It can be glass pipe, plastic pipes. It, it works all well. Right. So it's able to predict the length and the uh, whether it's closed or open. 
So this is very useful for uh, teaching in physics. And this is one idea that we can we use in our class. So do is ask the students to first learn about the physics behind the frequency uh, of, a, of a straw or a pipe. And then from there, we give, we give them the frequency of all the notes and ask them to perform this in class. So by making their own musical instrument using just straws, the students are able to perform the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song in class. And this will make the learning actually much more fun and interesting. And of course, we can always extend this to like asking them to just uh, make a sound like let's say ah, and then this is what actually the app actually record. So then we can ask the question student. Uh, so our wind pipe is it open or closed pipe? Right. Of course, uh, those who know the physics will know the answer. Okay. This is our second app, which is a spectrum analyzer. So you can see this is the QR code again for this app. So. The app is able to again uh, using okay this one we need a little bit of accessory so this is we 3D printed it uh, the STL file can be found here so by 3D printing this accessory uh, the student is able to produ produce this uh, image with this uh, reading here so what what is actually showing here is the light uh, of a sunlight so it basically breaks down the sunlight using this uh, our this spectrometer here into this spectrum and able to present the intensity of the light of the different color with the wavelength here, the x-axis. Right? So you can compare here, on the left is actually a sunlight and on the right is a fluorescent lamp. So you can obviously see the difference here is there is some dark bands here. Right? And you can see the readings here is much lower. So of course, uh, in physics, we would like to students to actually explore why is there a difference. And not only that, this app is also able to identify gas of different line spectrum. For example, here, this is the lamp here we have. And this is the what the app actually records. It's able to compare this. This is the NIST data uh, for the helium and the neon gas. So the based on the database, the, the app is able to compare the pattern to the our database and, and try to predict what gas it is. Right? So and of course. The question that we will ask the student is why does every gas give off a different spectrum? You can see the helium and the neon gas is different. And how does the app actually identify the gas? So through the discussion, we can actually teach the students a lot of physics in an interactive way. And our third experiment is a GM counter. Again, you can see that this is the QR code. So what we have, again, this one, I need a PN junction uh, diode. We also have shared the link. Uh, where to buy it. Okay, actually it's not here. Uh, okay, we can share it later. So, so the, the link, the text, I think is live. You just, when we share, oh, okay, the, okay. Right, when we right. share the slide, the link will have the, the, the link will bring you to the website that shows you everything, lah, where you can buy the things, where the app is. Okay, cool. Right, so uh, yeah, so this is the uh, GM counter that we have. You can just, you just buy this off the shelf at a, at a very cheap rate. And then uh, what happened is this is a, uh, a radioactive device. So if it doesn't have a, a radioactive source, what you can get is actually a smoke uh, detector. It's a smoke detector that is a weak source of radioactive uh, alpha source. So with that, you can actually uh, conduct experiment um, to show what is the count rate. How does the count rate actually differ? So you can see that here, what you have is a count per second against time. And you can see the fluctuation of the data to show that the random nature of this um, uh, radioactive decay. And of course, you can, of course, uh, adjust the distance between the source, put in different obstacles such as a paper or aluminum uh, foil, and see how, how does it change. And you can compare uh, what's the difference between uh, alpha, beta, and gamma source. How does the count rate actually differ? So this experiment, the students can conduct easily. Um, okay, you can buy this off the shelf, and you can just buy the uh, smoke detector, which are both uh, quite affordable. So this is another teaching idea that we have. Um, what we have is this is the radioactive source and this is a magnet, just a no normal neodymium magnet. So through here, we have three of these apps uh, and then you can see how this uh, the value changes. And from there, we know that um, whether uh, this is an alpha, beta or gamma source based on the deflection of the, uh, this electric field, uh, I mean, magnetic field deflecting the, this uh, beta source. 
So to summarize, uh, these apps are all developed using the EGSS, the Easy Java Simulation open source. Uh, and you can uh, actually open it to modify it uh, to suit your need. And it's also available on Google Play Store. So if you are interested, you can also click on this to find the video on how to use it further. So the study uh, was piloted with three schools, uh, 30 teachers, 900 students. And these are some of the comments that they made because uh, yeah, they, were, they were very amazed by how it's able to um, be the, such a simple setup, actually analyze uh, different things. Yep, so we have uh, completed our presentation. You can ask your question if you have any. Thank you. Um, I will check Q&A window. Is there anybody? Uh...